Hi guys, how are you? Hope you are doing good. Welcome back to the channel Agriculture Makes Strong. Today let us discuss about the important topic classification of the field crops. It is the important topic which is useful for the exams NABARD, SRF, JRF and other some important competitive exams. Before going to the video, if you are new to this channel, please like, share and subscribe to the channel and uh, do not forget to click on the bell icon for the more updates regarding the agriculture field topics. In this video, I want to discuss about the field crops classification and how they are classified and what are the types of classifications we will be discussing here in this video and uh, different types of classifications are like botanical classification, economical classification, special purpose classification, uh, classification which is based on the seasons, climate, root depth, carbon dioxide fixation, mode of pollination. About uh, field crops, we will be discussing in this video let us see about the classification of the field crops in this video. Let us discuss about the botanical classification, how the botanical classification has been divided. Uh, here, uh, the botanical classification in the field crops, which is mainly based upon the similarity of the plant parts and flower structure. And the field crops belongs to the division spermatophytes, subdivision angiosperms. And the angiosperms, which is characterized by the producing the seeds with coats. And the angiosperms are then divided into uh, class monocotyledons and dicotyledons. And monocotyledons, the grasses, uh, comes under the monocotyledons which include the cereals and the sugarcane and coming to the dicotyledons except the grasses uh, the except the grasses they are uh, legumes and other plants comes under the dicotyledons for example if you see in the monocotyledon crops the maize crops which are comes under the monocotyledons belong to some of the herbaceous family like Gramiaceae, genus Gia and the species Maize. Here you can see uh, the genus Gia and species Maize. The variety is S310 and uh, this is the way how the botanical classification has been divided uh, for the specific uh, parts, plant parts and the flower structure. According to the botanical classification, we can summarize the families into two types that is monocotyledons and dicotyledons. Here we will be discussing that monocotyledons, how they are divided and what are the families which comes under the monocotyledons. Uh, first one is graminae. Here in graminae, uh, the crops which are included are like wheat, barley, rice, maize, oats, sugarcane, sorghum, ragegrass and sudan grass. And coming to the liliaceae family. Uh, it includes like onion and garlic. Coming to the next uh, class that is the dicotyledons where in dicotyledons we will be seeing like uh, leguminase, malvaceae, lineaceae, solanaceae, pediliaceae, composite. Here we will be seeing this type of uh, gram families and in the leguminaceae the, some of the crops like uh, uh, field bean, lupine, chickpea, lentil, uh, fenugreek, uh, alpha alpha, soya bean, peanut, grass pea, castor bean, red clover, white clover are included in the leguminaceae. And coming to the malvaceae, in malvaceae family, uh, the cotton is included, and in lineaceae family, flax is the example of the lineaceae. And coming to the solanaceae, potato, tomato, and tobacco. Coming to the pediliaceae, uh, uh, here sesame comes under the pediliaceae and coming to the composite uh, where the sunflower and safflower comes under composite family. Here these are the uh, families which comes under the dicotyledons. Field crops can be classified based according to the uh, economical purpose or for the edible purpose. Here first one is cereal crops. We can say rice, wheat like that. And coming to the millet crops. Uh, uh, second one is millet crops. Third one is pulse crops, oil crops, sugar crops, fiber crops, fodder crops, spices and condiments, medicinal and beverages. This all comes under the economical classification for the economic purpose. Coming to the special purpose classification, here the special purpose means it is giving a special advantages to farmers by his own farming practices. Coming to the cash crops, it is an emergency crops. It is the substitute for the 
uh, failed crops or uh, under under favorable conditions uh, it will be uh, showing the cash crops and it cash crops are very growing fastly and uh, examples are like ray and millets and clover coming to the cash crops cash crops are only grown for the economic purpose and it is having showing the uh, short maturity and uh, coming to the cover crops these cover crops are planted to provide a cover to the uh, soil so that it can prevent the soil erosion and maintain the moisture content so they are called as cover crops coming to the green manure crops green manure crops are uh, like uh, they turn under while still green in order to improve the soil properties and increase the organic matter content these are the green manure crops like uh, cowpea you can see it is a green manure crop coming to the companion crops in this crops uh, in this case uh, crops are intercrop with an one another and each crop can be harvested ha separately uh, this is called the companion crops coming to the silage crops the crops are preserved in a succulent manner and for uh, by the uh, prevent this for fermentation in a tight receptacle here you can see some of the examples of the silage crops like corn sorghum and forage grasses and legumes coming to the classification based on the seasons there are types like uh, three types karif season rabi season and summer season the karif season which occurs during the uh, june to july or uh, september to october which requires the wet uh, wet weather and wet warm weather and coming to the rabi season here you can grow the crops during the october to november or uh, january to february it requires the cold dry weather for the growth and longer uh, day length for the flowering should be uh, favorable for the rabi season and coming to the summer season it will be uh, like uh, crops grown during the february march uh, or uh, may to june which requires the dry weather for growth and longer day length for the flowering period occurs in the uh, summer uh, crops classification based on the climate uh, is divided into four types like tropical crops subtropical crops temperate crops polar crops in tropical crops the examples comes like coconut sugar cane in subtropical crops rice cotton temperate crops wheat barley polar crops all pines pasture grasses comes under the polar crops these are the classification based on the climate coming to the classification which is based on lifespan there are three types like first one is annual crops biennial crops perennial crops coming to the annual crops here you can see that the plants complete their life cycle entire life cycle in single season and they die and coming to the biennial crops the plants grow for the two seasons like first season they show the vegetative growth and second season they show the flowers and the seeds and coming to the perennial crops here you can see that the crops persist for the um, uh, life cycle will be in two seasons or more than two seasons after the reproduction they do not or uh, die and they continue to grow indefinitely year by year these are the perennial crops the examples of annual crops are like sunflower safflower and soya bean coming to the biennial the examples are like uh, uh, you can see like uh, sugar beet onion sweet clover comes under the biennial crops coming to the perennial crops uh, like uh, clover uh, sugar cane alfa alfa and uh, these are the examples of the perennial crops classification according to the root depth first one is hollow root crops where the hollow root crops showing the depth of the uh, crop root system will be like a depth 1 meter and examples are like wheat barley and rye and coming to the second one that is intermediate crops the depth of the root system of these crops ranges from 1 to 1.5 meter in the case of uh, faba bean faba bean and sugar beet coming to the third one that is deep root crops where it is showing the alfa alfa that depth of the root system of the deep root system will be like more than 1.5 meters these are the classification according to the root depth the next classification is the classification which is based on the carbon dioxide fixation first one is c3 plants second c4 plants third is cam plants where cam stands for the crassilian acid metabolism 
and coming to the C3 plants where the net assimilation A of the plants will be 15 to 40 carbon dioxide per d square and high means at 30 to 70 ppm where the stomato open in this uh, C3 plants the stomato open during the daytime and the enzyme involved in the primary carboxylation is like ribose 1 biphosphate carboxylose and 1 meter and examples are like wheat, barley and ray. And coming to the second one, that is intermediate crops, the depth of the root system of these crops ranges from 1 to 1.5 meter. In the case of uh, fabin, faba bean and sugar beet. Coming to the third one, that is deep root crops, where it is showing the alpha alpha, that the depth of the root system of the deep root system will be like more than 1.5 meters. These are the classification according to the root depth. The next classification is the classification which is based on the carbon dioxide fixation. First one is C3 plants, second C4 plants, third is CAM plants where CAM stands for the Crassilian acid metabolism and coming to the C3 plants where the net assimilation A of the plants will be 15 to 40 carbon dioxide per d square and high means at 30 to 70 ppm where the stomato open in this uh, C3 plants the stomato open during the daytime and the enzyme involved in the primary carboxylation is like ribose 1 biphosphate carboxylose and coming to the C4 plants here the net assimilation of the plants will be uh, having the high like uh, 40 to 80 mg carbon dioxide per d square and the enzyme which is responsible for the carboxylation or like it is uh, phosphophenol pyruvic acid carboxylase coming to the cam plants here in the cam plants uh, this tomato open during the night time and uh, this tomato which can fix the amount of carbon dioxide in the night time and uh, it is having the high water use efficiency. Uh, there is no possibility of carbon dioxide entry uh, during the daytime in the camp plants. These are about the uh, carbon dioxide fixation, a classification about the crops. Here comes another classification which based on the mode of pollination. Mode of pollination will be having the self pollination crops, now cross pollination crops and both self and cross pollinated crops. In self pollinated crops you can see that the pollen and the embryo sac are produced in the same floral structure and or uh, it can be occur in different flowers but within the same plant. It is called self pollinated crops. In the cross pollinated crops here you can see that the uh, pollen transfer can occur from the plants and anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower. This is main important point for the cross pollination. Anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower in a separate plant which is called as cross pollinated crops and uh, if the self pollination reaches more than 5% it comes under the cross pollination crops. Examples are like corn and many grasses like avocado, grape, mango and some other plants with unisexual or imperfect flowers comes under the cross pollinated crops. Next one is like both uh, cross and the self pollinated crops where you can see that uh, these plants are largely self pollinated but it is having the various amounts of uh, cross pollination occurring so these are called as both cross and self pollinated crops examples are like cotton and the sorghum which comes under the both self and cross pollinated crops. If you like this video please like share and subscribe to my channel.